Able to Cook is sponsored in part by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Able to Cook media sponsors include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International. Welcome to this edition of Able to Cook, the one and only program that focuses on cooking and special needs in Vermont and beyond. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm on Seiler. Before we begin, in 2018, we started with Able to Cook. Now, Able to Cook is back. It will feature food history and teaching people with special needs how to eat properly. Um, before we begin uh, this show, we would like to say special thanks to Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others, including the, um, the help of partners from the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont. Um, before we get into the kitchen, though, today, we, uh, for this topic and this show, since uh, COVID is a bad uh, virus and disease, uh, we are going to go into um, food diseases and foodborne illnesses. Um, now, we are going to discuss um, a very um, topic uh, for biologists and people in the science world. Um, we're going to talk about uh, Mary Mallon, M-A-L-L-O-N, also known as Typhoid Mary. Typhoid Mary was an Irish-born cook believed to have infected 53 people with typhoid fever, three of whom have uh, had died, and the first person in the United States to be identified as an in, as an asymptomatic carrier of the disease Salmonella typhi, because she persisted in in working as a cook, uh, by which she exposed others to the to the disease. Um, she was forcibly quarantined by authorities. Eventually for the first two decades of her life. Uh, Malin died after a total of, of nearly 30 years in isolation. Uh, I'm going to mention in this show, uh, PBS, uh, the, the public broadcasting system, uh, has a uh, film uh, that they did, uh, a documentary with the program NOVA, uh, called um, called the most dangerous woman in America. Let's take a look a little bit at that uh, program, the most dangerous woman uh, in America. Let's take a look at this.
Okay, let's get back to uh, Mary Mallon and uh, Typhoid Mary a little bit. Um, in her early life, uh, Mary Mallon was born 1869 in Cookstown County, Tyrone, which is now Northern Ireland. Presumably, she was born with typhoid because her mother was infected during pregnancy. At age 15, she immigrated to the United States and she lived with her aunt and uncle for a time uh, and working as a maid. Eventually became a cook for affluent families. From 1900 to 1907, uh, Mallon worked as a cook in New York, in the New York City area for eight, uh, for eight families for whom she contacted typhoid. In 1900s, she worked in Mamaroneck, New York. Um, anything you want to say about that, about uh, the different diseases and foodborne stuff? Um, food poisoning. Yeah. People are getting food poisoning from a lot of restaurants because they don't, either the employee has it and they carry it to the food. Yeah, sick. you you have to wear your gloves, and yeah. this in this case, uh, that's why, um, especially in New York now, everybody has to carry a um, food license or food card. Um, yeah. We're gonna get to um, certain tests and, and food tests um, in other shows. From nineteen uh, oh se- from nineteen hundred to nineteen oh seven. Mary Mallon worked as a cook in New York City for eight families from whom she contracted typhoid. In 1900s, she worked in Mamaroneck, New York. Within two weeks of her employment, residents developed typhoid fever. In 1901, she moved to Manhattan, where members of the family she worked for developed fevers and diarrhea and the, and the laundress the person that did the laundry died. Um, Mallon worked for, went on to work for a lawyer and um, left after seven, eight, seven to eight people became, it became ill in the household. Um, in 1904, I know this is a lot, this is on Wikipedia for those that want to know, but it's extremely important. Um, she was, and we're going to continue to show pictures of Mary Mallon. Uh, she was, in 1904, she was hired by a prosperous lawyer, uh, Henry G- Gilsey. Within a week, uh, the laundress was affected with typhoid and soon, uh, four to seven servants were ill. No members of the family, uh, were infected, but... They resided separately, and the servants had their own house. So, um, talk about sanitation and food sanitation. Um, uh, Between the late 1800s and, as a matter of fact, the New York City Sanitation Department uh, started uh, within... um, the late uh, ni- uh, the late eighteen to nineteen hundreds, because of all the garbage in the street and um, horse manure, because back then horses carried disease, um, so on and so forth. So anything that carries the disease, the the um, the most important thing you must clean your kitchen um, when cooking. Uh, you must um, wear gloves if you are um, uh, dealing with raw product. As a matter of fact, since we're on the topic and we are going to show a picture, I have here a food thermometer. Um, if you're in another, if you're in another country, it goes to Celsius, and here it is Fahrenheit. Um, So, uh, and just to let you know, uh, in terms of food temperatures, we're going to show a picture, Um, raw uh, uh, poultry, meaning um, chicken, chicken, no, no, 
chicken, turkey, pheasant, any poultry has to be cooked um, at 165 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and 74 degrees Celsius. Beef is, beef or lamb is, um, is 165 degrees as well with three minutes rest time. Um, now, you know, some people personally, that's not my forte. Eating raw or too rare is a problem. Um, which brings me to this, um, since this summer is extremely hot and people do a lot of grilling, um, one thing that you should not eat, um, let me, I'm putting it up here and we can have a picture, um, and it's considered eating raw meat is very bad. Um, even, eat, eating, eating, eating raw fish is no good. Well, they have sushi, but uh, yeah. steak tartare um, yeah. is um, the that's that's um, steak tartare is a very bad thing. Of course. Uh, let me see. You should always cook it, you know, that's... You have to, you have to always cook, um, your, a matter of fact, uh, yeah. So, steak tartare is a meat dish made from raw, ground, minced beef. Um, yeah. or in this case, horse meat. Horse meat is yeah. a bad thing. Um, and getting back to, um... Yeah. Mary Mallon, it's extremely bad to uh, eat anything, um, and we can go through the kosher laws also um, in another show, um, <clears throat> but um, usually served with onions, um, pepper, Worcestershire sauce, and other seasonings. We can show a picture of steak tartare. Um, often uh, presented to the diner separately, to be added to taste. <clears throat> um, and it's served with raw egg yolk on top of the dish. The name tartare comes from generalized other raw fish or meat dishes. The yeah. last common version is in France of tartare or or aller vitor, uh, a mound of mostly raw ground meat that is lightly seared on both sides. Um, there are dangers uh, for eating yeah the, um, yeah you can get extremely sick. The health concerns have reduced the popularity of this meat dish in some parts of the world <coughs> because of the danger of contamination by, by, by bacteria and parasites, such as um, Toxoplasma, Gandhi, and um, Tina, uh, Tina Sinata, which is, uh, uh, it's hard to pronounce. Uh, the basic hygienic rules are followed by fresh meat, is used. The risk of bacterial infection is low. Uh, however, I do not um, recommend you eat raw um, product or raw stuff. Raw fish is a different thing if you if you're into sushi. Um, but um, for those, and I'm going to mention it uh, for those who, um, and we can actually show. And, and and just uh, courtesy of them, but there is a um, maybe we can show it at the end of the show um, to kind of um, you know, just say no. Uh, there, the old Rocky movie back in the seventies, uh, Sylvester Stallone uh, did, had a scene in his apartment uh, where he dr he was because he was running uh, and he drank raw eggs. Okay, um, 
uh, back then, a, a lot of uh, joggers and a lot of runners ate raw eggs. I do not, I repeat, for people with special needs, we do not recommend you eat a raw egg. Um, no. Now, a French omelet, um, you know, the egg is a little runny. I mean, if you're going to have a sunny side egg, that's a different thing. Um, no. But I do not recommend you drink or eat raw eggs because if you have a pre-existing condition, um, um, it could get you extremely sick. Um, so that's why we do not recommend it. But the foodborne diseases are extremely important, especially between raw product and um, foodborne. Anything else you want to say? I would say that, you know, people should be careful eating in restaurants because sometimes if they don't cook the food properly. Well, yeah. Um, uh, there are a lot of people that are supposed to be wearing gloves. Um, now, food poisoning is another foodborne disease caused by bacterial, parasitic, or viral contamination of the food. Bacterial yeah. con contaminants such as E. coli, salmonella, uh, yeah. singella, or listeria. Um, uh, parasitic contaminants such as uh, guardia intestinals, or I, I can't pronounce that word. Um um, food poisoning can affect pregnant women, older adults, people with disabilities, persons with weakened immune systems, persons with chronic medical conditions. Yeah. Uh, the prevention of um, food diseases, um, if you have a foodborne disease, um, you have common systems such as common symptoms such as diarrhea, vomiting usually lasts only a few days. A small percentage of cases of foodborne pathogens can cause serious, acute, or lifelong complications. Lifelong complications include kidney failure, paralysis, seizures, hearing or visual impairments, and also mental retardation or MR. Um and if you have um, a foodborne disease, you can call uh, poison control of Vermont. Um, now, um, according to the CDC, food poisoning, um, uh, researchers have identified um, 250 foodborne diseases, most of them infections caused by a variety of um, bacteria, viruses, and parasites. A parasite is defined as um, pets can carry parasites and so can food. Um, um, can, drink something, please. I got it. Um, um, and vet, um, so Please wash your hands frequently when dealing and touching raw product. Um, prop, um, follow follow proper food handling procedures um, to reduce the risk of trans, transmission of contaminated food. For people with weakened immune systems, especially people with disabilities, please be, ex ex uh, according to the CDC, be ex ex um, especially careful in contact with animals that could commit, could um, transmit these infections. Now, I'm going to say one thing. Um, certain, uh, certain countries, not making fun of anybody eating anything. Um, certain countries um, eat other animals that you and I don't eat. If you go to any of those countries, please make sure that the food is cooked, that you're eating, and if you need to get a doctor's get a doctor's assistance or doctor's advice 
when eating those foods. Those food shows that we see, Bizarre Foods with Andrew Zimmerman, I do not, we do not um, um, condone, even though we like those food shows and when we watch them, uh, we do not recommend you eat something that you are not supposed to. If you have a pre-existing condition, cerebral palsy, uh, uh, muscular dystrophy, anything that uh, you have um, that is defined as a disability or challenge, please do not eat anything that will make you extremely sick. Um, scorpions, spiders, tarantulas, anything of that nature. <laughs> well, those are the things he eats. Yeah, yeah, but don't eat and don't mention it. It's disgusting. <laughs> well, we are not making uh, we're not making um, fun of people around the world, but but don't um, eat any other creatures. But hard. please, yes, um, please watch what you're eating, and um, as we say well, in well, Jewish, well, always do your research. Always do your research on something that you want to eat. Before you eat it, um, as they say, you um, you are what you eat. Now, in terms of parasites, in terms of parasites, uh, years ago there used to be a, um, and it still is. If if you eat pork or bacon or anything like that, there's something called trichinosis, which is known as worms. Uh, please, please cook your food before you eat it. Um, yeah, you must. Um, now, um, certain food can, um, have parasites, uh, or diseases, um, malaria, if you're in Africa or any other country, um, you must get a shot before you go. Um, now, um, in terms of, oh yeah. How a parasite affects people, for example, if you're infected and feel sick, they might not want um, to donate blood. So if you have been affected by a food poison, don't donate blood. Um, um, anyway, it, uncooked fish, crabs, mollusks, um, lobsters, crabs, anything like that is known as a bottom feeder. Um, undercooked meat, raw plants such as watercress, and raw vegetables that have been contaminated by human or animal feces. Now, Mary Mallon, um, she was, um, she was hunted down by, by Dr. Ju Dr. George Soper, uh, from, um, back then because of her, hands not being washed. You must wash your hands um, because there is a huge thing. Um, we're going to talk about it briefly, um, even though we might not want to talk about it. Um, and and this, is, this show is for people with disabilities and special needs and other people who want to learn about um, special needs. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about it. Feces has the most germs. Okay, there's three places in terms of germs. Um, uh, the kitchen has germs. The bathroom has germs. Please, when you are um, handling raw food, please wash your hands before you go to the bathroom, because if you don't, you could pass a virus. Um, feces or fecal matter is the solid, uh, semi-solid remains of food that was not digested in the small intestine and has been broken down by bacteria in the large intestine. Feces contains relatively large amount of metabolic waste products such as uh, bacterially altered uh, altered by Reuben and dead cells from the lining of the gut. 
So we ask that um, before we end that you use a food thermometer when eat when cooking and you must wash your hands. We cannot say that enough. Um, so many people, so many people in years past, including Mary Madeline, who was quarantined and she didn't like being quarantined. So unless you want to be quarantined with a disease that you've never had before, wash your hands uh, when you are cooking. Um, raw product, raw food, anything, even uh, we add, even if you grow food uh, in a garden, carrots, celery, anything you grow, please wash it, okay? Um, it's, mo it's most important if you don't want to get any sicker that you, if you are, if you are ill and you can't help being uh, um, ill because of your disability or challenge, uh, please wash your uh, food so you don't get any sicker. Um, and um, as a result, Mary Mallon, uh, she lived her life uh, in quarantine mainly before she uh, had passed away because she was really trying to deal with her innocence. Um, so um, this puts an end to this edition of Able to Cook. Thank you for our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Sports Services, and the partnership with um, the Division for the Blind and Vision Impaired. Anything you want to say before we end? No. Okay. Um, I'm Lauren Seiler. Happy I'm cook Lauren Seiler. Happy cooking. See you next time. Able to Cook is sponsored in part by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Able to Cook media sponsors include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International,